Well, uh, sorry, there was a computer error, so we have to restart the class, but I'm going to try to uh, recapture the entire lecture again for those who missed, who will be missing. Uh, uh, well, lecture 19. Okay, Kakada is now coming in. Paksu! <laughs> Uh, I told you that uh, we are now changing our paper theme to Tonggap Church Plant in Cambodia. Why? Because uh, I saw an example of Professor uh, Bachna's uh, church. It is a very partnership church. And I thought maybe we should learn from him. So uh, how did they accomplish? But in the context of P CPTI, uh, was CPTI ever uh, possible to plant church like Professor Bachina's church with Korean missionaries? If there was, I want you to look for it. I want you to interview. I want you to go. If not, then how come CPTI cannot plant church like Bachina's church? So just very simple. It's 10 page paper on problem. You know, CPTI church plan planted 160 churches. And all 160 church, the partnership church or Katongap church, what I call Tongap church was 15 or 20 or 50. And of that, you interview one or two church and found out how was it possible that you could have the same relationship, partner relationship. So that's something that I think you could work on that. And the reason that I'm I changed my uh, topic for this class is because the last class paper, uh, no one's turning it in. And I don't want to downgrade your paper. I want to give you the best grade as possible, but I cannot wait on and on and on because I have to go back to America uh, by April 20 something. And I, once I go to America, I don't wanna, I cannot really grade your paper. So um, the first class, the methodology class that which ended in February, uh, if you could turn it in till tomorrow, that's good. Then your maximum grade could be A. Uh, if you could turn by April, then A minus, next week B plus, next week B minus, 28 B. And if you turned it in in May, then you'll be just, best grade will be C. So I don't want to give you C. <laughs> so please turn it in as soon as possible. Uh, we had this course, uh, we had lectures with uh, Professor Chan of Korea, and then we had lecture with Professor Bill uh, from America, and it was really, really good. Uh, they had a different idea, they had thoughts, and then of course, uh, Professor Vachna, uh, Vichna, uh, basically uh, gave a very good example of what Tongap Church or Partnership Church looks like. You know, he, how he started and how he suffered. You know, although he did not get enough salary that Lord provided, and, and but it was his idea. You know, he could have got 500000 a month, but he said, no, you know, I want to serve God. And, and so this is not issue just with cop or patron. It's issue with client as well. So it's not like, oh, if there's not a self-sustainable church, oh, because cop did not provide enough. That's not the case. It is the work of the earth or the client who is willing. So I want you to really study in the CPI church plan context, has there any been a uh, church like his in CPTI? If yes, let us know, you know, how many? Oh, there are churches like that, 10 of them, 20 of them, more the better, you know, 50 of the 160 churches are like that. That's great. Let us know about that. I don't think anybody in CPTI know. Uh, so let's do, if, if, if it's not, if the answer is no, then why? How come uh, CPTI as a school cannot plan church like that. And I think this would be a great research project where you could learn from your own people. So, um, well, Cambodia Presbyterian Theological Seminary, I, I always said, it's not what is it, but it is who is it, right? Remember, it's you, <laughs> you are CPTI. So as a CPTI, I want to do a whole review uh, Chapter one through 18, it will be very, very quick, 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 quick. But I want you to uh, recap. I want you to review and said, okay, 
So how can CPTI plant Tonga church plant in Cambodia? That's the goal. I want you to become a partner someday and plant a church. But how is it possible? How can we even start that? That will be your paper, my, my lecture. So we talked about Kap Benur and Tongap and all that. It's just uh, only you make Tongap church planting possible. It's not Methodist, it's not Baptist. I'm not teaching them, I'm teaching you. And, I, and, and you and I, as we, must really understand the church planting that was done in Cambodia through CPTI and really be honest and ask, can we do this? And if we, if we cannot do it, what was the problem? How come we cannot do it? And then so that you solve the problem. This problem is not a problem because it's there for you to solve it. So we're gonna to try to solve that problem. So what did you learn from Professor Vichna? So before actually we go on, I really wanna hear from you. So let's switch over. So I don't know what happened to Visai. Maybe electricity went out, but, and I don't know what happened to Darot. <laughs> he disappeared. What's going on? What is going on? Oh, Kakada's back. Okay. So, well, I'm going to ask everybody. So, uh, uh, Kakada, yeah. tell us, what did you learn from Professor Vishnu? I, I, I learned from him a lot about the ministry. Uh, that like he talk about his wife that have a lot of salary, but uh, his his wife can get uh, can come to with uh, uh, teacher Vavajana uh, Jana, and he live in the in the church and get food from the member church. So he can grow up with the member church and the church go together. Not, not pastor have rich, but the church must be rich first. Yeah, I, I got this, this point. So I can learn a lot. I think it's a, it a good point that we serve the church, make the church rich. After that, we can reach too. Not pastor or leader reach uh, before the church, but should church grow up first. Yes, that's all, it, Professor. Mood professor. I can't hear you, professor. You mood. Sorry, professor. You was muted. You was mute. I, I don't hear you. Okay. Uh, Horn Sang, can you share with us what you learned? <laughs> I learned from Professor uh, Rajana. So many, uh, I think see the first starting uh, church planting difficult because he only support about 40 dollars a month. But uh, this is uh, a difficult situation to live, have a family. So that uh, he tried to planting church, but also I uh, follow him all. 
not thinking about uh, money, but only follow <coughs> respect. This is a good point for uh, for uh, 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 pastor that uh, become pastor. If have not a good buy, cannot become a good pastor also. <laughs> I study from him uh, like that, Professor. Yo. Okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, if you're not talking, please unmute yourself because the, the speaker gets much better if everybody's muted. Let's hear from uh, who didn't speak yet? Noptola. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. I I have two points of, of uh, learning from uh, Professor Vajna. Um, one, I appreciate his his uh, family sacrifice for uh, the kingdom of God. He not he he did not want a bad, uh, a good sexual life, but he came into the mission of God and just uh, get a little support for missionary or for uh, church that, that uh, his family decided to uh, uh, see uh, the kingdom of God first, not for his sexual life. And one thing about a, a relationship, a good relationship between missionary and uh, himself is uh, made me uh, mean a surprise that we need to make a make a, a good trust between each other that we can uh, uh, trust each other for doing anything and uh, the missionary let him even though the missionary can do better can do better than him but he still let him to do by himself that means uh, his missionary uh, teach him to uh, to do and minister uh, in uh, his mission. So I very appreciate for these two things. Thank you, Professor. Sorry, I could not hear you, Professor. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I was muted. Uh, that's good, good sharing. Two points. We'll take note of that. Uh, Visai, you ca came in now. Uh, why don't you share with us what you learned from uh, Professor Vichna last lecture? Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, last week, uh, it is touching lesson uh, with uh, Pastor Vajana, uh, we, uh, I also have learned uh, how uh, uh, our church be strong in uh, financial support. Uh, actually, uh, uh, my church too, I also plan uh, like uh, him. We are still uh, growing too slow. But I, I hope that later on, maybe we'll strong him. Even though now we are weak, we cannot uh, support uh, by our own. But I pray that uh, soon, as soon as possible, we will uh, like become like him. He is a good model uh, to our uh, CTPI. Okay, thank you, Professor. <laughs> Good, good. <clears throat> Very good, thank you. Uh, what about Darot? What did you learn? Yeah, first, I would like to thank you, Professor, for giving, uh, giving me a chance to, uh, to uh, share about uh, Professor Wachana's life in uh, ministry. Yeah, I have learned from Professor Wachana about bird planting. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Sorry. 
Yes, yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, my laptop, yeah, sometimes, yeah, it is not good in audio input and output. So uh, I always uh, ask you like that. Yes. Um, the first I interested in is um, missionary. Yeah. The missionary because uh, he start the church also with uh, missionary also, and but uh, his missionary understand yeah understand each other about minister about minister yeah. he tries uh, to uh, understand each other and still uh, ministers and still work together yeah and let him uh, do whatever he wants so the first thing i uh, interested in uh, his minister is uh, the first missionary missionary yeah. missionary understanding yeah. missionary understanding uh two he believe self belief he believe in jesus strongly he commit his life to the minister to the ministry for jesus to his belief self belief and three self sacrifice he he learned to sacrifice something the first the first he received but after that he learned to uh, sustainable self sustainable in his uh, ministry church and family i think that it is not easy for all to do that i think that is not easy yeah sacrifice yeah, money yeah and uh, try to uh, serve god without uh, much have uh, much more money yeah it is not uh, easy and he has one more point uh self starting yeah he start he try to start 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 if we know all things uh i i will sacrifice yeah i will be uh, sustainable yeah i will be uh, strong i will be safe but if we don't start yeah we cannot go step by step yeah we cannot grow up yeah self starting is uh, most yeah important for our life for church uh, also yeah we know thing but if we don't start we cannot do that forever yeah so i learned from uh, professor uh, vachana yeah uh, just uh, my idea <laughs> yeah just my idea. thank you well, that's thank all for you. my opinion yeah no that's very good thank you for sharing that good uh what about hunchet hunchet share with us thank you professor and um, the life of uh, uh pastor Vajina. Speak louder. Speak speak louder, Hunchet. We could barely hear you. Oh, can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me? Yeah, we cannot hear you. We hear you soft tea. Okay. Sorry, Hunchet. I guess we have to hear from you later. <laughs> but you could hear us, right, Hunchet? Okay, well. Okay. Uh, Nithya Vong 
you just enter again, because I guess you're going in and out. Can you share with us what you learned from Professor Vichna? Mithya? Okay. All right. This, this day, Professor, internet is very, very slow. Okay. You know what? I'm going to just go ahead and uh, uh, go on with the lecture then, because we cannot, this uh, internet is not cooperating with us. Excuse me, Professor, I have a question about uh, the 10, uh, 10 page pages of the paper you uh, yeah. led us to do yeah. about uh, Dongkap. Dongkap. Yeah. Uh, in the DPTI church, that's how how many how many percent of uh how many percent among uh, uh, 150 churches in CPTI that we can say that yes or say no. Okay, I didn't understand the question. So your question is, how many churches? Is that how many? Yes, how many churches among 150 churches in PTI that we can say yes, there is Dongkap Church in if, it, uh, if there's one church. If there is one. You said yes. There's, uh, a, there's uh, yes. one Dongkap Church in CPTI or two Dongkap Church in CPTI or three or four. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it yes. doesn't have to be too many. Thank you, Professor. Okay, good. So we'll go back to my lecture. Yeah, actually, uh, I uh, will be doing another lecture with Jean Johnson. Uh, tonight, I'll be interviewing Jean Johnson from America, and she's the one who wrote um, we're not the hero. And I think she would also bring her perspective, a different understanding. She speaks perfect Khmer, under, lived here a long time. Uh, so she could really speak. And she also planned a church here in Phnom Penh. Uh, and uh, I visited her church here in Phnom Penh, worshiped with them and saw them in action. And so it would be really interesting. Um, so I'm going to run down a real quickly of all the stuff that we learned so far in this class. And I'll try to arrive at what is a Tongap church. And so, so I found there was some kind of relationship dynamic between Korean missionaries and Cambodians. And then uh, because of my experience in Siberia, I, I start asking how come in Siberia, in Russia, which is much more difficult than Cambodia, I mean, in Siberia right now, uh, it's minus 30 degree. I mean, people literally freeze to death because it's so cold. There are, in terms of uh, poverty level or the economic level, uh, I never saw one Lexus SUV in Siberia. I never saw one Range Rover in Siberia, you know. So Cambodia, Phnom Penh especially, much more prospering than all of Siberia. How come from 2003, we planted 27 churches and all of them thrive, most of them thrive, and one church even became a mega church and planted 10 churches. How come that's not happening in Cambodia? So that was my question. So I said, is this, is this money issue? right? Is this money issue? So I start studying about money issue, economic issue, financial issues. And then sure enough, yes, uh, his name is Jin Sop, Jin Sop Song, Song Jin Sop, Korean missionary to Methodist. They planted 150 churches here and each month he needs $16,000 for salary and uh, upkeep. So he said, we cannot plan any more churches because we ran out of money, okay? 
So I said, okay. I realized that money was an issue. So I started learning about this patron-client relationship in Cambodian Christians and among Koreans. So I started reading about a uh, patron-client relationship from Leisurewood, and I told you that she's a professor. And then I started reading about that from Eisenstadt, from Israel. And then I realized that between Korean missionaries and Khmer pastors, there is this patron-client relationship. But calling it a uh, patron-client, I realized it was more than money issue. It was a relationship issue. It was not lack of money or it's more money. So even if Korean missionary have $100 million and he could give all of you $2,000 a month a salary, Cambodia pastor still would be not independent. Why? Because it wasn't money issue. It was relationship issue. So there's a client, Cambodian pastor feels like they need to, you know, work with Korean missionary as a patron. And then uh, Professor Wolfgang Muno from Germany, who did a study in Thailand, and he noticed that this is the hierarchical relationship. Patron is on top, client mm -hmm. is the, below. And then, you know, in Korean missionary case, it's the church in Korea sending Korean missionary and Korean missionary planting churches. Like Korean denomination, Presbyterian denomination in Korea planted CPTI and CPTI now has pastors working. And so it, it was that kind of relationship. And that kind of relationship uh, stems out from Europe. And the Europe already had that kind of built-in uh, issues where client always took the money from patron. And I said, the patron-client relationship is give and take. You know, it's got to be balanced. Okay, patron with status, prestige, honor, influence, control, power, political loyalty is given to patron by clients. Whereas clients receive from patrons security, loans, intercession, tenancy, identity, money, empowerment, employment, access, and resource. So these are given to clients and client gives back status, honor, and okay. so that, that's what patron client is. Um, and I said, Korean missionary comes to Cambodia as patron and Khmer pastors are like a client. And then it's all intermingled together. They are kind of working together like this. Well, same thing. Denomination gives Korean CPTI. The Korean Presbyterian denomination gives CPTI. And CPTI has Khmer pastors working. Okay. So I found this relationship dynamic between Korean missionaries and Khmer pastor. These are called patron client. But it was not really 100% accurate description. It is like, it's like, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it has a, that kind of dynamic, but it did not fully describe what was happening between Korean missionaries and Cambodian pastors. So I said, what is it? Well, Vickery Hill, Judy Ledgerwood, David Chandler, all these are the people who says that because Cambodia is like 80% farmland, you know, and as a farmer, patron client relationship is very clear. Patron is the one with large land. Client are the farmers who doesn't have land and work for the boss, the land owner. Okay. So, uh, but then as I was reading Eisenstadt's book, he talked about patron client dynamic as Oyabong and Kobong in Japanese. Oyabong and Kobong in Japanese actually is of Korea. And then I begin to uh, explain the social dynamic between Korean and Kamai as Kapenul, and it made a lot of sense. Well, number one, because Koreans are used to Kapenul relationship. The whole entire Korean uh, structure is set up as Kapenul. So instead of calling patron client, the moment I said, yeah, I think it's more like Kapenul relationship, it made more sense. It, it, it began to make sense. And so I thought, okay, maybe we need to 
keep it as cup and urn. So one aspect of Korean hierarchical patron client can be observed and cup and urn relationship of Korea. So on page 11 of my book, I said, you know what, let's not call what's happening between Korean missionaries and Cambodian pastor as patron client, but let's call it cup and urn because it makes more sense. It's more cl closely describes what's happening. And cup and ur can be observed when, when you are being cup jib. So there's a such a clear uh, uh, relationship issue that there is a role that cup plays and there's a role that ur plays. But I said, I want to be Tonga. I want to be in partnership. I don't want it to be cup and ur. We can start as cup and ur, but then you should go up and cup should come down and be at Tonga stage. We need to be at Tonga. That's why I want us, the CPTI students, to look at Cambodia church plan with that lens. What is cup and earth? And I start my book by talking about my experience with an uh, American seminary where 300 Cambodian pastors trained at the seminary. They wanted to kick all the Korean missionaries out. Uh, I said, <laughs> remember this picture? The 300 Kamai pastors said, let's kick all the Korean missionaries out because Korean missionaries are the biggest problem in their ministry. Wow. So then I asked the following question, what kind of relational dynamic between these 300 Kamai pastors and Korean missionaries? Obviously uh, that they uh, blame Korean missionaries, the Korean missionaries plant church next to their church and give rice and to steal the sheep, steal the sheep from their church. So I went and watched all the Korean documentaries on Cambodia. And sure enough, uh, these Korean missionaries said, yeah, yes, 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 yes. We, uh, we, give, she uh, we give rice. And some of these church are actually CPTI church. <laughs> so, some CPTI church is giving away rice and stealing uh, Assembly of God Church, Baptist Church, Methodist Church members, okay? but done by Korean missionaries, maybe through Cambodian pastor. So I said, wow, that is uh, what we call kapjil or patronizing. Uh, it's not patron client relationship, it's kapjil, which means it's the worst form of kap. It's the most terrible way to become a kap. Right? So giving rice, making rice Christian. And then I said, oh, some people accuse that Kokong, there is a terrible case in Kokong that this Cambodian, Cambodian pastor is having a hard time because this Korean missionary is not only giving rice, but giving money, $5 a month per person. So if you have 10 people family, you could receive $50 a month just by attending church. So I actually went to Kokong and interview this pastor, make sure that if they're actually doing that, and then uh, it was true. And this uh, Kamai pastor was leaving ministry because uh, we're passing out rice. And then Mission Kampuja 2021, NK 2021, I was confronted by young Cambodian pastors saying that why Korean missionary build big church and bus everybody from our village. You know, 20 minutes away, you send little van and take all my church members promising rice and busing everybody. So I went back to all the interview that I saw and sure enough, they're talking about how God blessed them. And so they are now busing people. Uh, and that is a, a practice done by Koreans in Korea. That's not just Korean missionary doing in Cambodia. See, Koreans in Korea, the mega church in Korea, they send out these buses all over the city to steal the sheep from other areas. Okay, and so the, so the young pastors and small church pastors and church planters in Korea also demonstrating, please don't do that. Stop busing church members from our area. So that has become a huge problem not just for uh, Khmer people, but it's a problem for Korean church pastors in Korea with a small church. So 
So that really has become a problem. So we know this thing going on. So Kapena relationship was evident in Cambodia because of this presence of Kapjil. So who are these 300 Khmer pastors? They, they may be the pastors, Cambodian pastors, who have experienced this Kapjil from Korean missionaries. You see, the, the whole Kapener is supposed to be something beautiful. It's not something terrible. Kapener relationship means it's just different state status, right? And so it could really blossom into a re, uh, relational issues or relational uh, bond, and it could become something good. But the key point is that when we start doing kapjil, which means patronizing, then it becomes a problem. So kap and ur is okay, kapjil is a problem. So be, and when what happens is that when the first kap start doing kapjil to their ur, then it's going to happen. The second tier also, the clients at the bottom also will be patronized because the one above us is patronizing, and he has been patronized by the one above them. So first kap. Second, and third, when Kapchit happens, it's gonna travel down. Why did that happen? Well, there are many, many ways. Why would it happen? But it is because Korean evangelical Christians, Christianity has been overly influenced by American Christianity. What do I mean by that? Well, Jonathan Bunk wrote, the Korean church famous stress on formula for numerical growth and the resulting corporatization of ecclesiology has given rise to serious structural, sometimes ethical problems for both churches and missions. So Jonathan Bunk, the world famous missiologist are saying that because Koreans are so focused on numbers, numbers, number, quickly, quickly, grow quickly at the largest number possible, it has created a problem. So it's not only Jonathan Bunk, but there is a, professor or pastor named Uchimura Ganjo. Uchimura Ganjo was a Christian who lived in Japan 1861 to 1930. So four years before he passed, when he was 65, year, 65 years old, he went to America, lived there. And then he said, oh, Americans are so into numbers, number, numbers, how they value numbers, or he should have said worship numbers, right? Why am I leaving church? Well, a lot of young pastors in America living there, okay? Well, how does that number affect? And I told you that in the study, like Todd Johnson's book, talks about how Cambodia is like the third fastest growing Christian country in the world. And, and because he's basing his research on MK 2021, which talks about how from 2012 to 2017, 635 churches are planted. And we go, wow, great. But they don't really talk about, well, in the same time they are planting 635 churches, 608 churches closed down. Okay. What does that mean? It, it never grew. Cambodia never grew in Christianity. Okay. Every 11 churches being planted per month, they closed down 10 churches. So probably it, it is happening because one church stole members. They're stealing from other church and they're shutting down other churches by making rice Christians and, and all that kind of nonsense. So we need to be honest about this because while the number of church increased, the number of Christian decreased, okay? And, but the number of population had an explosion growth. There are more children being born in Cambodia than anywhere else in the world. And yet the number of Christian decreased. So all that time CPTI was planting church, Christianity dropped in number. Okay. And that's the reality. Mata Hoshe, what do you think? All right, Mata Hoshe. Okay, I think this is a good time to take a break. I need a break. <laughs> it's been already uh, one hour. Uh, so let's get back uh, at 1.45. And then if you have a question, 
uh, please uh, write to me or Kakao talk to me so I can respond in the second half. I hope that, uh, uh, that we'll have better uh, computer connection in the second half. Okay, see you guys. Let's take 15 yeah. minute break. Yeah.